Welcome back to our idle game tutorial series. In this episode, we will make a very basic user interface that will allow us to add stuff to the game more and more and more without ever running out of space. Also, in the meantime, I will show you some of the very best nodes there is in Godot to organize things uh, on your screen without having to manually position items and think about, you know, uh, the amount of pixels between each things and then what is the X position, Y position, etc, etc. Um, I just wanted to say if you want to use the chapters they are in the description because at the moment YouTube doesn't allow me to use the chapter feature so you can't have the chapters within the video in and of itself right so you have to check the description for this okay so let's go with making a user interface so we will begin by creating a new scene right and that scene we will name user interface. Let's save it in a new folder, which will be user interface folder. And well, save this at the root. It seems quite good. All right. So for this layout, we will be using a very simple one with a left panel that we'll use that we will use for navigation and showing resources and a main view which will take the rest of the screen so let's create those two nodes shall we with the left panel and the main view um, that's going to be a control node but we will name it main view so we have left panel and main view okay in order to position those two children we will use a special node which we name hbox container the horizontal box container will basically position all the children from the node horizontally right so we will pick the box and give it the full rect anchor this way it will take all the available space and here it is the entire screen all right and then we just have to move left and main view uh, into the hbox container so now they are children of the container and we have this, all right? So as you can see, um, our two children, left panel and main view, they have no white, which is expected at the moment. And this is based on how the Hedgebox container works, right? To make this simple, the container has some space available which is this, right? And it will try to position the children based on their need, right? So there is a kind of discussion between the container and the children. So it kind of goes as follows. The container gets the children. It asks them, how much white do you need? Then the children answers, in our case, I need zero and I need zero. So the container is like, okay, you have both zero and zero because that's in the space I have and I will give it to you, right? So we have to uh, configure our children here to allow them to tell to their parent how much space they need. So the left panel here will give it a minimum X size of 240. And there it is. Now it takes some space. 
there, right? The next one, we can make a subtraction between the size of the screen and subtract 240, but really it wouldn't be the best way because HBox container comes with a setting which is absolutely perfect. It's the available, um, it's the possibility to have the children saying, please give me all the space available you have. So this comes under the layout category and you go into container sizing and you have this horizontal expand checkbox here. So if you check this, there it is. It basically asks the parent, please give me all the space you have, okay? We will see very quickly what happens when several children ask for space. That will be soon, don't worry. <laughs> so there it is. We have the left panel and the main view. Just to make a little bit, to make it a little bit more visual, I will add a separator, which is a built-in node, and I will add a vertical one, which I will position in between those two objects. All right, so if I run the scene, you can see that we have a vertical bar right there. So you can leave it like this if you wish. I actually like to have a little bit of uh, blank space at the edges of the separator. So I use a margin container, okay? I put the separator within the margin container, which at the moment does nothing because it's not set up, but I can go in the margin container settings in theme overrides, constants, and there I can define some margins, which will be 16 pixels for top and 16 pixels for bottom, all right? Now, my little bar here has some uh, empty spaces here, which I tend to enjoy at the moment, so why not? <laughs> That's it. So here we have the main view and here we have the left panel. What we will do is on this left panel, we will have a little navigator with some links, which will allow us to switch between views. And at the bottom, we will have a sort of recap of the resources we have available, right? So to do this, we will have a VBox container, which this time is vertical inside our left panel. I ask my VBox to take the entire available space. And it's not going to take the entire screen this time. It's just going to take the space given by the parent, all right? So there we are. Let's add our two control nodes, which are navigator and resources. So we have navigator and resources, all right? Now what we can do, because even though we know the height of the screen, we can ask both children to take the entire available space. And in that situation, what the container will do is, all right, I have two children asking for space, so I will give them both half of what I have. I will split it equally. That's what it does. So by expanding both, you can see they take half top and half bottom. Again, I will just add a little separator in between just to make things a little bit clearer visually. So we have a, an H separator like this. There we go. So if I run the project here, we can clearly see the, the three areas we have created, one here, one here, and one here. 
just to make it a little bit more visual, I will create um, fake uh, information for the moment. So let's add, um, well, for the navigator and the resources, they will need their own VBox container again to organize both the links and the resources. So let's add a fake link, shall we? Link, link button, let's go. And let's add some text, which will be, let's say, prototype generator, right? So this will be a link to prototype generator. And in resources, we will have, again, a VBox container. And we will add a label there, let's size, those nodes, that's gonna be, well, we don't need to name it since it's fake info, but Stardust, and let's say 15, all right. So now we have fake infos in there, right? Um, it's a little bit too close to the edges, right? So maybe we could add uh, some margins in there by just adding a margin container that will take the entire space with, um, let's say, 16 pixel on each side and drop the vertical box in there. And just do the same for this node with 16 pixels on each side. And that will be great. There we go, drag and drop the resources, run the comments in, and there we go. We have a link, we have resources showing here, and we have the main view. And what's quite cool right now is that we already have created a main view to put in there, so we don't have to get fake infos, sort of. So what we do is we just, um, blah, blah, blah. I've never used the right click. Instantiate chai scene. Yeah, that works. So you can right click and instantiate a chai scene, or you can just drag and drop any scene you want to put as a children of this node in main view here, all right? So this is how scenes work, really. They are a root node, with many children nodes. And since a node is can both be a root or a child, well, you can have a scene being the child of another theme, scene, other scene, which allow you to nest things like this. So here, the prototype generator that we did is contained in this one node, right? Now we can click this little button here to edit it as an individual, right? So this is how you kind of uh, build all your little block scenes together into bigger scenes and on the end into a game, which we will happen to do very soon. So there we go. Now I can just run the scene and as you can see, uh, our prototype here was already set up to take the entire space given by the parent. parent. So it fits quite perfectly in there. And we can have it work just like it used to work, except that this label here isn't connected, so it won't update. This will come in a data refactoring video very soon as well. So there it is. We have our very first basic UI in here working. And the next thing we need to do is to have a functional um, navigator, right? Right now the navigator is fake and that's what we will be doing in the next video. So this one was rather quick because we didn't have to make any script. Um, so yeah, let's just 
commits everything we've done. So it's just, yeah, one scene actually. So it's rather small commit, if I can say. And that will be basic UI layout. Yeah, let's go with this. All right. And that's it. Where's Godot? Godot's here. Well, thank you for watching this episode. Uh, I will see you in the next one, which is making a functioning navigator. See ya.